You know what time it is. It's time for new product. <laughs> it's new product time. Okay, this very first thing this week, um, this is a, a, a video of a newish product that we have. Um, we have, uh, this is from Gawkin, and I'm not going to say anything about it. You let it speak for itself? The musical stylings of Craig. So that's one of our newest products. We just did a video for it, and now it's... It's newish. It's out there for the world to see. Okay. And enjoy. That's great. And He's actually a really good musician. No, you and can he tell. Works, he, and he works in our receiving department. You can tell he actually can play drums. Okay. Unlike okay. Me. So, Lady Ada, we have, we have, we all have some new cases and tops. So do you want to talk about Yes. These? We have two new colors for our Raspberry Pi um, case, the best Raspberry Pi B Plus case in the universe. Space Raspberry Pi Model B Pluses perfectly. Um, we now have them in purple and red, and you can buy the bottoms and tops separately, so you can mix and match. So for example, here's purple with red as a top, and then the other way around. And, can we go uh, to the overhead and see these? Yes, of course. I will no demo way. the purple one. I love the purple color. This is really great. And installing Raspberry Pi is really easy. Um, remove the micro SD card first and all the other cables. And then, this is always tough to do over here, so I'm going to flip around so I can see better. Um, you snap it into the side, and then you press on the USB um, port and the um, logo. Hold on, I have to do it closer to me so I can get leverage. And it snaps into place, and that's it. But just imagine that I could just like, snap it all together here. And then um, all the ports are available, and then you can plug in your micro SD card, and then you can mix and match tops. For example, I'll just plug in the, the red top on top, and it snap fits on quite nicely. And then we have like all sorts of color tops. We have um, clear and gray also if you don't want to have a color for the top. And then it's translucent, so like it can protect it, and you can definitely see the color, but you can also see the LEDs when they blink, and there's a slot for camera and for um, display, and then there's also a slot over here for a GPIO cable if you want to have a GPIO cable come out. And it works great with like any hats. All hats will fit inside of here, and then you can even have a clear protective top. So it's his, uh, my favorite case. It's designed by Mike Dole for us. He's an excellent job, and we're also going to be working on an A-plus version of this case very soon. So we'll have more Raspberry Pi case goodness. Okay. Next up, uh, we've got, you guessed it, these little cute little bolts. Look at these. These are just standoffs. These are little standoffs. They're um, nice. If you need to raise up things, keep them away <laughs> from things, just stand off. Oh, you don't have the photo from the side. I can show it. No, um, I don't. I, I don't know. I, whatever, I, whatever I could get, I got. It's okay. I can show it on the overhead. This standoff. Overhead. Okay. <laughs> But I wanted to see you say overhead. See, people don't know if this is live or not. I have to keep showing them it is. Um, so this standoffs, these standoffs are used for hats, and they let you uh, plug in um, a Raspberry Pi hat um, very nicely so that it doesn't um, bend down and, like, touch, like, you know, because the hat is only connected by the 2x20 port over here. So this way, um, when you... Um, attach these standoffs, and I have two sets of standoffs here. You can plug another hat if you like on top of here, and it will stand off, and it's exactly the right height so that um, each hat is like perfectly parallel to the Raspberry Pi. Okay. All right. Next up, um, you got these crazy new little NeoPixels, but they're not what you think. They're not RGB. They're something else, Lady Ada. They're white. Yeah, there's warm and cool ones. And these are really, really amazing to look at in person. You showed me these, and I'm like, oh my god, there's a billion little art projects that I'd love to see in the world now. So what's the difference between these and like what everyone else thinks 
NeoPixels can do. In the, our... They're not actually NeoPixels, they're dot stars. There's dot stars. Yeah, you don't, you you don't let, know anything you about let engineering. Me, you let me just go on forever like that. I'm whatever. This is, no, you, that, you, can't be, you can't say that because we had a big conversation about do we want to call it NeoPixels or dot stars? And I said, well, NeoPixels is kind of known, but you're like, oh, dot stars is something completely different. And so we talked about this a lot. This is a perfectly reasonable thing to be confused about. I, I, uh, that's okay, but this is do, these are dot stars. Oh, man. It's okay, but they're dot stars. They are two wire SPI, not one wire. I've probably just answered Manchester. every question from everyone what? else. They're like, is this dot, is this NeoPixel? No, because it feels stupid. Man. You done, are you done hating yourself? <laughs> no. Love will tear us apart. <laughs> Again. <laughs> um, these are uh, six pin LEDs, and they are two wire SPI, so you can actually use them with any processor, you don't have to have a NeoPixel library, it's, a, it's called the dot star library because it uses two wires instead of one wire. And these are white LEDs, so they have three white elements instead of a red, green, and blue. Um, and what's nice about the APA 102s, which is the chipset that these use, is that it's very high frequency, so the, there's no dithery, flickery effect. The, the color is extremely smooth and high frequency, so you don't see any like flickering effects. And so that's why we got these in white to start, so you can um, show them on the overhead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? What? I'm doing, I'm doing my job. Um, so I just have four of these hooked up, and they're just going through the brightness. And so they get really, really, really bright. Um, and they also do their quite, uh, they dim quite nicely. And you can, you can still control them as 24-bit color. Um, but instead of RGB, it's just white, white, white. So you get 24 bits of white. And this is the warm white. And then I'll, um, let me uh, swap out. I'll remove this. And these are just soldered onto a... Um, little breakout board so I can plug them into here. So now I have, oh, sorry, those are the cool white, and then I'll compare it with the warm white LED. So that's the warm white, so you can see it's much yellower than the cool white ones. Uh, the cool white LEDs are like 6,000-ish K, and then the warm ones are 3,000-ish K. We'll probably also have these in like the, the NeoPixel, the four, four pin LED, which is one wire. Um, protocol, but they don't look as good as these, so I wanted to start out with these um, to start. And you can you just get the raw LED and you just solder it onto your circuit board as you like, and then you can use our, our library and code um, to communicate with them, and then you can chain as many as you want. So if you want to do like lighting effects, or if you want to have a, a really pure white light, it's very hard to get a pure white with RGB elements, like even though combined they do make white, it never looks that great. And this has even a diffuser built in, so the light is really um, smooth and, and looks very co coherent compared to RGB. So that's why we have, because you are like, why don't you just like make the color using red, green, and blue? Never quite looks right. Okay. But I'm now we have it. a solution. All right, I'm gonna zoom in on that a little bit for you. Wanna, you wanna get closer? No, don't touch anything. Okay, not touching. Yeah, look at that. Ooh. Okay. It's bright. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, all right, so in addition to that, um, you <clears> know, <throat> We have photos of them in action. Yeah, you can see that they have this the phosphor on them that diffuses yeah. and then here's the light. The you can one. see that in this one, this is the cool white, you can see the chip a little bit, but yeah. the, the diffuser works quite well and uh, makes it look like it's just kind of like emitting this huge bright light out of it. Yeah, okay. Uh, next up, you have um, more of these um, Screens. screens, yeah. This is seven inch screens. Yeah. And these are totally not NeoPixels. These are not NeoPixels at all. Um, these are seven <laughs> inch, 800 by 480 pixel uh, yeah. displays in RGB, and we also have it with a touch screen. And to demo it, I just have it hooked up to right. um, Raspberry Pi. So I'll, I'll go to this. I'll, uh... And I'm using, oh yeah, can you zoom back out? Yeah, I'm gone. Thank I'm you. Gone. I'm doing it. Don't, you don't have to touch anything. I'm not touching anything. Okay. Why would I touch anything? Okay, good. Um, I have it hooked up to um, the, uh, let me see, I'll turn the light on so you can see it, the, uh, our driver, which is a, a TFP401. It's HDMI and micro USB to this connector over here to the screen. And this is the touch screen version. And I just have it connected up to um, a Raspberry Pi. And it's a lovely touch screen and it works really great. And it's HDMI and it looks beautiful and it's like super bright and, and awesome. And um, so you can buy the screen. And if you have a use for a 40 pin TTL screen, you can just buy it, use it, 
for whatever. But we recommend using it when, with one of our driver boards. We have this HDMI driver board that I just showed you. And then we also have one for an Arduino or compatible called the RA8875. So either of those will be able to drive a display this big. Um, you do need to have a special driver chip for it because these have to be clocked continuously. Every pixel is drawn like 60 frames, you know, a second. So you can't just like use it like our small displays where you you know draw a pixel and it takes care of it for you. With these, you actually have to have a, um, a high-speed controller to control that many pixels. Okay. Um, but you know, this works really great. And then you know, the touch screen um, acts like a mouse. That's nice. If you'd like to have a touch screen as well. Okay. So these are just the raw displays, but that's my demo for them. Okay. Um, and then this week we kind of got a big deal. This is a big deal. This is the new uh, hat. Yes, this is the final hat of the the hat apocalypse of yeah. late 2014, 2015. Uh, and then, oh, here's a photo. Yeah, that's a photo of the standoffs. Yeah. Okay, but it's okay. This is this is useful here too. Um, this is the shows the standoffs. It's a twofer. Um, with a stacking connector, and, and I actually suggest using the standoffs with this hat as well. All right. So here uh, it is with some motors. Yeah. Wait. Go back one. Yeah. I have to talk about this hat. This hat uh, has two. Dual H bridges. Um, they're the bottom uh, chips down there. Uh, the one that says like M1 ground, M2, and then M3 ground, M4. So each one is a TB6612, which is a uh, 1.2 amp per motor, 3 amp peak for when its motor's totally stalling out. Um, and so you can control two stepper motors or four DC motors. Uh, or any combination. So you can do like one DC motor and one stepper, or two DC motors and one stepper. And then you can stack multiple hats together so you can have like any combination of steppers and DC motors that you want. You'll have to write the Python code that makes it do what you want, but like you can, as long as you provide the power, you can control as many as you like. And then since the Raspberry Pi doesn't have a hardware PWM control, um, it does have like one PWM pin, but it's shared with the audio and you don't really want to use it. So instead we uh, threw on a PWM driver that PCA9685, which is like my total favorite 16 channel, 12 bit PWM, PWM driver. And then our Python library actually kind of does all the heavy duty work for you. You just tell it, like, m set the speed of the motor to this and move it forward or move it backward and move the stepper forward, backward, interleave, double, micro stepping, all that good stuff. Kind of helps you out. It's not like the most powerful, most crazy advanced motor driver, but most motors can be driven with um, 5 to 12 volts DC and like 1.2 to 3 amps of current. So let me show the demo. Want to go to the red? I do. Yes. Please go to the overhead. I'm going to hold on. I got my hat. I'm going to turn on the light. And then one second. I have to grab the. So you have to power the DC motor um, and stepper motors externally because um, a Raspberry Pi cannot provide current for the motors. Like unless an Ardu unlike an Arduino, which has that nice DC plug, the Raspberry Pi doesn't. It just plugs in over micro USB. So for this, we're going to be plugging in you know, 12 volts DC over here, which will turn on the stepper. And that's a stepper motor. And then this is a DC motor, which is just kind of flashing. That's kind of look like that has a nice effect. Um, and the stepper motor is just moving around randomly, and, and the stepper is just, just flipping around. But it just shows you the kind of uh, motor control that you can do. If you'd like to do servo control, we also have a servo hat, which you can stack on top of this one, which will add 16 servos as well. But this is really meant just for um, stepper motors and DC motors. So by combining this with a servo hat, you can control like every kind of motor except for brushed. But um, I think like almost all robotics projects, if you want to build your own uh, CNC controlled cutter or 3D printer, or if you want to make a rover that has uh, DC motors as the um, for motor control, this hat will definitely be able to do it for you. It has reverse polarity protection on it, and um, has an EEPROM, so we can auto detect and all that good stuff. Okay, all right, and with that, Lady Ada, guess what? <coughs> well, those new products. Yay, hat! So that's the last hat for a bit. So I hope people enjoyed all the different hats that we came up with.